Hello again, wrestling fans of the world. I am the real Bobby Munson. This is Ring Respect Retro. And before we get started, I'm going to go ahead and ask you to subscribe to our channel and turn on notifications. And yes, once again, we are here with Ring Respect Retro. As always, I'm with Papa Smokes, the man with the angelic voice. And he's going to let you know about what we're going to see this week on Ring Respect Retro. Yeah, how you doing out there, everybody? We got another episode of Ring Respect Retro. This time we're going to watch... A match from June 27th, 1986 from Sam Houston Arena in Houston, Texas. The territory is called UWF, Universal Wrestling Federation. And this is going to be a tag team title match. The champions are the Fantastics, Bobby Fulton and Tommy Rogers, versus the Sheep Herders, uh, also later known as the Bushwhackers. But uh, we've got the Sheep Herders, Butch and Luke, here with... Uh, their cousin Rip Morgan bringing them out to ringside. And just another little piece of uh, fact there too, Bobby Fulton at times would also tag team with his uh, brother Jackie Fulton under the same name as well too. But yes, uh, definitely tonight uh, with his uh, tag team partner Tommy Rogers as the tag team champions. As we head on down to ringside for the Fantastics versus the Sheep Herders. And yes, uh, both these teams, very decorated uh, teams in the in their time, in the territory days there, Papa Smokes, uh, the Fantastics, uh, multiple tag team titles, including uh, AWA Southern Tag Champions, NWA US Tag Champions, PWA Tag Champs, I mean the list goes on for them as well. Same with the Sheep Herders, uh, APWF Tag Champs, uh, Can-Am Tag Champs, and NWA Florida, and NWA US Tag Champs as well too. So. Especially something some people might not know about the Sheep Herders. I, I also was not aware of them as the Sheep Herders or as these heel, heel characters prior to uh, getting to find this out from yourself. I mean, I always knew them as the go goofy bushwhackers that you're used to seeing get in there and to eat these losses. But I mean, these guys are as badass as it gets when it comes to professional wrestling. No doubt about that. They were hated and feared throughout the 70s and 80s. Uh always representing New Zealand and uh, they were just absolute jerks and uh, they, they just a, a fine fine tag team but look at these two coming out here Munson this is more up your alley I think they got some bow ties on some sparkly vests and look at the ladies they oh, love them perfect I mean that's uh, that's what I like to see that's good stuff right there but I mean this uh, this matchup in particular, Papa Smokes. I mean the fans are in for quite a treat. I mean this one turns into something else and fast too. I mean you want to talk about you know you you look at modern days and people talk about even like let's let's say the late 90s with the Attitude Era. You had a lot of violence. You had ECW kicking in around that time and stuff too. And I mean a lot of that stuff wouldn't be possible without what we end up seeing in this ma particular matchup here tonight. Yeah, that's so so true and. These two tag teams feuded for the better part of a year <clears throat> through Texas and the South, and uh, they got to know each other very well and got to be able to uh, put on a great match. And again, this one, as it unfolds, is just excellent. And you see the Sheep Herders wasted no time getting this one underway. Yeah, nice. No, no chance to get the uh, warm-up gear off or anything for the Fantastics. Uh, getting jumped from behind. This is great. As our video tells us here, it's a New Zealand boot camp match. Not exactly sure of the complete rules of this, but I'm going to assume there's uh, no disqualifications and no countouts and stuff like that. So we're going to see a wild tilt here. This is going to be great. As far as we can tell so far, no, uh, no necessity to tag in your partner either. This is uh, looks like one uh, one where you just uh, let her buck. This referee in here doesn't seem to know what to do. I think he's basically a formality, uh, just a three counter at the end, I'm sure. But uh, oh, now we got some biting going on here. Great stuff. It looks like Butch is bleeding already, too. Didn't take long for that to happen. I mean, I gotta, I gotta ask this question. I know I posed this question to you off of the show before Papa Smokes, but 
how was it for you growing up uh, being seeing these uh, sheep herders, knowing how feared they were and everything like that, and then they finally make their way over to the WWF and they're put out there as these uh, gimmicky guys that are licking the kids' faces and everybody loves them, but they, I mean, they can't win to save their lives back then. Uh, as a fan, how different was that for you to see that change in them? Yeah, it, it was it was kind of shocking. I obviously recognized them once they came to WWE, but I, I had seen a number of uh, wrestlers do that too. Uh, uh, guys that had a certain character in the, in their territory days and all that, and then got signed with WWF based on their experience and uh, being good workers and such like that, and then having a drastic gimmick change you know to fit in with the wwf machine it was it was disappointing sometimes to be perfectly honest but uh they have the biggest stage of them all they they have all the money they this a lot of those guys went there just to to finally make some decent paychecks so you can't really blame guys for that and so i mean again that uh seems to be the thing nowadays a lot of people they, they they watch these indie darlings that they really enjoy and they they fear for them when they go over to the to the dub i mean they think that their gimmick's going to change and they're, they're going to be completely ruined but i mean when it comes down to it is it a complete ruining i mean as a fan it might ruin the experience for you a little bit but i mean these guys got mouths to feed they've got uh, to put a roof over their heads and Sometimes that job security with WWE is is well worth it for them, despite the fact that they might not be quite the same as what they were prior to heading over there. For sure, and and of course they, that's how they're known is from their WWF run as as the Bushwhackers. So you know that unless you were watching you unless you were living in a city that had matches like this and you could watch them live or a TV show that you could watch, you would never even know about these guys. So. So it's valuable in a way too. It it puts uh, puts the wrestlers on such a such a big stage. And we got more cuts going on and more blood than I've seen in a long time here, Papa Smokes. Oh, they've got the apron ripped off the ring. They're using chairs. That we got the taped up hands and the uh, tin foil underneath the knuckles. And oh yeah, now we got some blood from the Fantastics too. The ladies in the crowd are going to be lo- just beside themselves with this. I'm pretty sure that I saw a chair shot being used there where, I mean, there was not really a whole lot of protecting the head going on either. I mean, it was a full-on head shot that went down. And then we got a bull rope in there too. This would have been such a key match in this entire year-long feud too. Uh, you know the guys uh, were committed to going out and making this look good, which obviously they're doing right now. They do. But Butch has got a what is that a pencil or a plastic knife or something he's just digging it into uh, Tommy Rogers forehead now with the, <laughs> the standard of, of the flag this is just excellent we've got uh, a little bit of a noose hanging going on in the side of the ring too oh. I mean th- th- this kind of action wouldn't even be allowed in WWE nowadays yeah. especially I mean they just yeah I mean it's gone so PG that you wouldn't be allowed to have this you know without the exception of an occasional pay-per-view incident or something and like that even then they'd turn it into black and white and again that's not me knocking on WWE they have their style I enjoy their work I'll, I'll respect it for what it is but I mean if you want grueling hardcore wrestling you're gonna have to see- seek it out elsewhere and just like back in the day it was no different in in the 70s and 80s if you wanted that kind of style you had to find it from the territories or the touring wrestling and now it, and then you know if you wanted the cleaner the family friendly show that's what WWF was always there for I mean outside of the attitude era I think that that's all WWF's ever been I mean they only took that s- slight change just to keep up with things at that point in time in the late 90s Sheep herders have taken the upper hand on this one now. Some good double teaming and uh, knocking him out of the ring again. Oh, that's a good one. He's hanging by his foot. I like it. Just vicious chair shot right into the stomach. I'm sure a, a lot of fans are used to. Uh, seeing the fantastics in a match like this too they you know normally can see by their image they're pretty 
baby face characters they usually keep uh, keep it inside the rules and all that stuff it's, I, I guess it remains to be seen if they could, can make it out of this brawl with these uh, master masters of violence here the sheep herders and if this is your first time experience a sheep herders match which it very likely is uh, to be honest this was the first match that I was uh, introduced to uh, and, you know a fantastic match in its own but go back and watch a lot of their work I mean I, I've met the Bushwhackers back in the day. I used to watch their work. I loved watching them as a kid. But going back and watching this now, I missed out on a hell of a lot of great wrestling as a result of not knowing them back in their sheep herder days. For sure. And take a look at this camera shot here too, Munson. Like, look at this guy right on top of it here. That's just I love the camera work in this match. It's it's intimate. It's right up close. It's it's excellent. The kind of stuff uh, you, you do in uh, HIW Wildside, getting right in there and getting the, the good close-up shots. And people don't realize how difficult that can be sometimes. And the reason I say that is because you don't always know what the boys are about to do when you're the camera guy down there at ringside. So you have to be watching all angles and prepare yourself to get the fuck out of the way if it's time to get yeah, out of the way. I want to tell this old lady here to get the fuck out of the way because she's wandering right into the middle of the action. Oh, now coming back using that bull rope against the sheep herders. And now we got a little two-on-one advantage going. Yeah, maybe, yeah, maybe three. <laughs> yeah, more than two-on-one with uh, Rip Morgan in the corner. That flag just being used. <laughs> well, this referee's going to get physically involved. What the hell is he going to do about it? Oh, and now the police nightstick is in here. Oh. <laughs> They've used everything but the kitchen sink in this one. <laughs> I'm pretty sure at this point I've seen more blood inside that ring than uh, I've seen since they shot Abraham Lincoln. <laughs> that looks like Rip might get involved. Oh, no, he's, he's staying out for now. I bet you we'll see more of him. There's been nothing pretty about this particular encounter at all. Not a whole lot of uh, not a lot of wrestling. Just a straight up brawl and a fight going on inside that ring here tonight. And this is uh, sometimes I think becoming a lost art in today's wrestling is the brawling style. There, there, there are wrestlers who still use that, obviously, but uh, it's it just it's magic to my eyes to see a good brawl like this going on. It's just so excellent. I like this big giant ring in uh, Houston, Texas here too. Lots of room for the boys to move around. Yeah, a lot of the times uh, with the independents and stuff like that, you used to see more of that 16 by 16 ring yeah. as opposed to the uh, the larger 20 by 20 that's mostly used by the dub themselves. Uh, not a lot of companies have that uh, size ring for the boys to move around in. You know, that also, uh, an interesting point that you bring up about the size of the ring and uh, how much a wrestler really needs to know when they're inside the squared circle. And they call it ring awareness for a reason, is because you have to understand both the uh, size of the cur the ring you're working in, uh, whether it be the 20 by 20, 16 by 16, your ring awareness has to change. And that goes from everything from running the <clears throat> ropes to how you perform your moves and where you need to be standing in order to do them in order to not severely injure your opponent inside that ring. You know, these guys from the territories were touring different territories, wrestling for three a week, four a week sometimes. So you'd, you would have not only different opponents, but different rings, different setups. Like it, it had to have been challenging for those guys. And fantastic. Seem to have found their stride here. They've taken firm control of this one. Oh, just laying it to the forehead. What is Oh, that's oh, a he fork. He's, a, he's digging in and having dinner. <laughs> Fantastic. And living up to the name. And again, when was the last time you seen a fork used in uh, modern day professional wrestling? <laughs> Without going to something crazy like a CZW show. Yeah. And 
just digging it right back in. I mean, this it almost makes it difficult to watch at times. <laughs> oh, because he's digging it in that cotton, too. No question about that. And, and it, They don't build them like they used to uh, at times. I mean, you look at these boys. I mean, that's got to hurt like a son of a bitch right there. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, the juice is flowing in this one now. Wow. Everybody's got some color coming from their foreheads now. I think he just came down off of there with the fork too, just jabbed it right in. No care for no care for your opponent's well being. Here I knew the corner man would come in at some point. He's gonna use the flag. Oh and he oh, misses. Disaster. Oh, disaster. And the fans are erupting here now. This is a big building, this Sam Houston Coliseum, too. It looks like it's rocking. Oh, I think we're seeing a big momentum change now. Who would have thought the Fantastics could get to such a dark place that they'd be able to get in there and just tear it up with the sheep herders like this? Like this match seemed like it was uh, it was destined to be in the sheep herders' advantage the entire time, but man, the Fantastics have really shown that they've got the grit to go at it. No, no a little fork jab right as he's going down to still with the fork. Well, referees calling an end to it. Uh... Perhaps there doesn't have to be a pinfall, perhaps it's uh, a little more like a last man standing match kind of thing, but uh, Sheep Herders were down and out of that one, and uh, Fantastic's pulling off quite the win. Maybe it's just measured by about how much blood has been lost by the opponents or something. Maybe. Not, quite, not quite sure the rules of that New Zealand boot camp, but uh, your winners and still the tag team champions are the Fantastics. You see right there, they... Oh. They might walk away the winners, but they're looking pretty colorful themselves as they walk away from this one. Yeah, that was more of a war than a match. Definitely was. But what a fantastic match. I'm glad that we got to pick this one, Papa Smokes. Probably one of my favorite ones that we've done so far. Uh, hope you folks enjoyed it as well, too. Uh, before we go, though, I want to make sure you subscribe to the channel and turn on notifications. And, as always, to lead us out on Ring Respect Retro, here's Papa Smokes. Yeah, all you fans out there, I hope you liked that match. I sure did. Uh, go back and watch your cl retro classic wrestling from the past. It only colors up your knowledge of uh, wrestling today, and uh, it's just damn fun to do, too. So have a good time. We'll see you next time with Ring Respect Retro.